the weather in Germany is similar to here in Utah. I kind of felt like it was, um, it was just like home. They, I mean, the hots are a little bit hotter and the colds are a little bit colder due to the humidity. But for the most part, on a normal day, we would uh, wear our long sleeve shirts, go out and work. If it was above 20 degrees we Celsius, we didn't have to wear our jackets. And we would go ahead and be on our way. Um, another thing about the German culture is I really like their traditions that revolve around music and the traditions that revolve around um, Christmas. They start Christmas the be at the very beginning of December and they have the Advent Zeit, which is the time of the Advent. And they have these Advent calendars and they have Advent wreaths and they celebrate each Sunday prior to the uh, Christmas morning. And that's a tradition that I would want to hold up for the rest of my life with my family. And another tradition that I found interesting was on they open their uh, gifts on Christmas Eve, which is interesting to me. I always thought you do it Christmas morning, but Germans are a little bit different that way. Um, let's see. Another cultural thing about Germany is uh, the public transportation. So you don't see as many uh, cars in cities and the roads aren't very wide because they uh, they all take public transportation. So if you want to do street contacting, uh, the best place is right around the public transportation areas. So while I was on my mission, uh, the biggest, I think it's the biggest city that I'd served in was a city called Nuremberg. And um, it's a very famous city. It's a very important city in German, Germany's history. Um, it belongs to like a, a, a uh, what's the word, a region called uh, Bayern. And uh, that, that's like the more traditional sort of Germany. Um, and so there's lots of culture there and lots of history. Um, it's a very big city. They have uh, subways, they have trains and trams and buses and just lots of public transportation. Uh, I think that's the most common uh, form of transportation in Germany overall, but especially in Nuremberg because it's so big. They had so many different ways of traveling. But um, uh, what else can I tell you about, Germ about Nuremberg is that <clears throat> it's very famous for its history in World War II. Uh, as many other places in Germany as well. But in particular in Nuremberg, uh, there's, a, there's a museum dedicated um, purely to, uh, to uh, Hitler's, or Adolf Hitler's like, basically rise to power uh, in politics. Uh, that happened in Nuremberg, a majority of it, I think. I think he might have even started in Nuremberg. Um, so it's very famous for that. Uh, it's also famous for um, the Nuremberg trials from World War II. When, uh, when the World, World War II was over and they were, um, they were doing the trials for all the, the, the German leadership who were involved in, um, in World War II. <laughs> uh, and those trials were done in Nuremberg, obviously, uh, where they're all convicted guilty of, um, of all the offences that they're accused of. Um, and uh, yeah, but th that's just like, that's a more like a bit more of a negative side. Uh, and the, the flip side, the more positive side, Nuremberg is actually a very beautiful city and uh, has uh, a very, like lots of wonderful old buildings. They, they're, they're famous for their Frauenkirche or the, the women church, I guess, if you translate it directly. Um, and they're very famous for their Christmas markets. They're beautiful there. Uh, and uh, I just loved serving there. It was one of my favorite cities and I got to serve there uh, probably the longest out of, out of all the areas I served in. Um, and uh, there were so many different cultures there too. Lots of, lots of people from all around the world just living in Nuremberg. Uh, so not just Germans, but people from Turkey or, um, or just other parts of Europe that I met, lots of people. It was a really amazing place. Yeah, Usingen um, is one of, the, one of the 
sweetest places on earth. It is just literally land of rolling hills, beautiful, beautiful trees, forest walkways, and little villages spread out through these hills. So it's just, and these German houses, these little German villages of like two, 3,000 people. And so it's a really fun area because you can just go work in different, different villages every day. And we would just drive our car and say, we're gonna go work here this day based on where our appointments were. It was just really, really fun. And uh, I was with some great, great companions there as well, which I really enjoyed. Um, so we, Usingen, the ward there is really probably the best part about it. Um, there's a really strong ward because it's right by Frankfurt. And so a lot of the members commute to Frankfurt and work for the church. And so the ward is very strong. And a lot of people know about the members of the church because a lot of the members have such an influential part of, are, are an influ integral part of the society and culture there and have a lot of connections. Uh, I got a ton of member referrals while I was there, which is, you'll learn is the things you want. <laughs> so it was just, the church, every Sunday was just such a sweet experience. The members are very kind. It's, we had a lot of eating appointments and, uh, the, the best part too is you just get to go out every day among these this, these beautiful hills, discover a new village, and go teach them the gospel. So, oozing in was was very neat. I'd like to share one story there. Um, so my trainer had actually just finished being trained when he trained me, which is quite incredible. And uh, his his name's Andrew Bratzman if he's watching this, but um, he did an awesome job and was, was a really hardworking, obedient missionary. Just had to give him a shout out. So we, one time we were driving and uh, it was a Sunday night and we were far away from home. We had, got, had, we had to go out and we got visited a member who was a little bit farther out. We needed to get home. But uh, in our stupidity, we had forgotten to fill the tank with gas and we were running on fumes and we were not gonna make it. So. The ox was in the mire. We needed to go uh, fill up our tank with gas. And uh, we typed in, typed in the GPS and it said that there was a gas station just two miles down the road. So we started driving and uh, got there and the gas station looked like it had been closed for five years. <laughs> like, oh no. <laughs> so we're like, let's go a little farther. We went, we're, and we're, we had, we, we'd already driven away from where we need to go home. So we're even farther than where we were. I'm like, what are we gonna do? We can't like call members and tell them that we're stranded. Like, this is so embarrassing. So we finally, it was starting to get dark and we, we went farther and we, we went, came to the edge of this village we'd never been before. And there was a gas station. So we pulled in this gas station and for whatever reason, it wouldn't take our car. It was open. It looked like it was obviously being used, but um, there was nobody in the shop. So, it, but it wouldn't take our car and it wouldn't take our cash. Well, we, did what we should have done a lot earlier and we started we was like we should say a prayer so right as we started to fold our arms um, this man came walking out of the fog and all I remember is he had really olive skin and a Yankees baseball cap on so we're like right my trainer another bratsman said hey let's go talk to him so we you know, ask him if he knows what's going on here. So we did. And we said, um, we said, you know, do you know who, what, anyone who can help us with this gas here? We're, we're stranded, we need, really need some gasoline. And he said, yeah, the owner lives in that house right there. So like, great, thanks. And he just, yeah, no problem. Just, and just kept walking off and disappeared into the fog. It was a really foggy night. Now, this, this sounds incredible, but it, it really is, it really did happen. So we go knock on the door, this older German man with a mustache comes out and is like, you know, what do you want? We're like, hey, we just need some gas. And he's like, are you the owner? He's like, yeah, I am. And came out and helped us fill this up. We're about to get back in the car and he says, hey, how did you know that I lived there? We're like, oh, some, some guy who was walking told us. He was like, I just moved here two weeks ago. Nobody knows I lived here and that I own this gas station. Um, and we got in the car and just said a prayer of gratitude. And there were several experiences like this in my mission, but I would just testify that God is aware of us. 
He's aware of us now. He's aware of us while on our missions, and he won't let us fall and struggle. He knew our situation, and he sent somebody, whether it be an angel or a man, to help us. So that was a very neat experience there that I think about every time I think about Isingen.